So one of the things that I tend to ignore when I'm driving my car is the engine warning lights. <laughs> it's just because you think this is going to be expensive. When when those lights come on, you start to think, oh, I'll just postpone it. I'll just I can limp along for a little bit more. It's still driving, you know. I'm still cruising along, so why cause myself problems? But that light's there for a reason, right? It's there. Something's gone wrong, and it needs your attention. Um, and I think we wanted to kind of explore this just a bit in your life because your body or situation around you will give you those warning lights. Yeah. Things are not okay and you need to address this. And I think as men, typically my experience has been that we can push that further down the road as far as we can. We can kick that situation down the road. What do you think? Man? I think you've just said if you ignore your engine warning light, it could be expensive. <laughs> If you ignore your engine warning lights, it could cost you everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we have seen countless numbers of guys who have ignored those yeah. warning lights and it's cost them everything. Yeah. Their relationships, you know, respect to their children, their jobs, the list is endless. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it could cost you everything. So it's a little bit more than it could be expensive. Yeah. Yeah, it literally could be a wipeout. Absolutely. Do you think it's that guys sometimes don't see these warnings in their lives? Like if, if their mental health is struggling, is it is it that we try and mask it or is it? I mean, my, I remember hearing a guy speaking at the gathering one year and he said that sometimes men will go into their sort of metaphorical tool shed and nine times out of 10, they can fix stuff in there. And they go to that place, they've got the tools and they work it through. But there's some moments in life where a problem will come along and you go to that shed and there's nothing in there that helps. Yeah. And, and it's in those moments that you start to really question. You go, well, I can't fix this. And then my experience and the experience of others has been that you medicate. You go, oh, well, I'll just take the edge off by having a few drinks. I'll just take the edge off by jumping online and having a chat with a bird. or, you know, And, and you can go left or right, but actually the problem's still there. You're just trying to get around it in, in, in the ways that aren't helping. Now, what do you think, mate? I think... Um to quote Professor Damien Ridge, um, who did a masculinity audit for the campaign against living miserably, right. um, he, made a, he made a real interesting comment which struck a chord with me, and that was that men, in general, tend to self-medicate. Right. Uh, because we've lost that ability to speak, mm. and there's all sorts of reasons why, why that's happened. When guys get together, uh, we self-medicate. Right. And that can be in the form of alcohol, pornography, yeah. um, a relationship out, outside of what you should be in, yeah. um, all sorts of reasons, drug abuse, anything. And when I think about my own journey and my own issues with mental health, mm. um, I self-medicated. Yeah. I didn't like who I was. Mm. Um, I couldn't cope with who I was and what I was. Yeah. So I tried to mask that. Yeah, yeah. Instead of shouting out, because there was no facility to do that, yeah. I self-medicated and, and got involved with the stuff I got involved in. Yeah. Uh, and I think that applies to a lot of guys. Yeah, it really does. I, and just coming off the back of that, one of the strengths I've found in, in my life, one of the rhythms that's helped, is the men's group. Yeah. You know, I'm part of a men, men's group, a small group of us, A7, but it's been a place consistently, we meet twice a month round a fire, and we do life, we tell story. We, we just have created a, a platform or a space where you are 100% safe to bring that engine light, no matter how gory you know, or, or awful it will look, it, it's a safe space to do that. And that has honestly saved a load of us yeah. from, from redlining out, out completely. You know? yeah. And that's why you know, it's even we really encourage guys to form up, to get in these men's groups and these spaces. But it's got that focus, isn't it? Let's get, get strength and let's get sorted out. Let's find who we are. But then we've got that ingredient that's essential. We know Jesus. Let's, let's get tooled up and sharing with the blokes that are desperate out there. Absolutely. Yeah.